Hey everyone, Andrew here, and I have another book review today. This book was suggested to me by my friend named Lizeth. Me and her have similar tastes for the most part. It's like we're very darker, very grittier kind of stories, or things are at least a little bit more on the supernatural, a little bit more on the bizarre. And there was a book that she'd been recommending to me for a little while, and I finally got around to reading it, and it's called Vampire Kisses. Yeah, with a title like that, that's kind of why I was a little hesitant to read it. But, you know, I trust her judgment, and I know she has some interesting choices, and I watch and have read and watched some really bizarre titled books as it is anyway, so why not, if there could be something here. So, Vampire Kisses is the story of Raven Madison, and Raven Madison is a 16-year-old goth girl, living in a small town that she refers to as Dollsville. Um, basically, when she was gr when she was a little kid, her parents were hardcore hippies and let her stay up late and watch horror movies and do all these things. And then when they had their second child, they became straight edge and and got rid of all of their hippie stuff and all that stuff and became normal. Except for Raven, who refused, <laughs> and instead became full-on goth. Spends most of her life being picked on and bullied, but she stands up to the bullies and is one of the few people who will go against this. the main bully, whose name is Trevor. I hate... I'm like, ugh. He's annoying. Which I love. She got super revenge on him, because she went to a party, and he was drunk. And wanted to kiss her, and so she took him out in the woods and kissed him and convinced him to take off his clothes. And then grabbed his clothes and ran to back to the house and closed the door. So he was wandering the woods naked. And no, so the story kind of really starts when uh, this new family moves into the abandoned house on the hill. Which is a creepy mansion that the former owner was from you know, European country that may or may not have been Transylvania. And she died in the house, and her spirits may or may not still haunt it to this day type of house. So this new family moves in and immediately gets this reputation around town of being these weirdos who don't come out at daylight. The only person of them who's ever really seen is the butler. Um, they were seen trucking in uh, containers filled with dirt, and the youngest boy has been seen out and about at night, he doesn't go to school, and he keeps being found at the cemetery? Coming in and out of the cemetery? So, basically the entire town eventually believes that they're vampires. Because they go, they went to a Italian restaurant and asked for no garlic, and things like that. It's and everyone else is like, oh, no, vampires, they're weird. And Raven, of course, is like, yes, vampires, make me one. I want a vampire kiss, which is being turned into a vampire. Okay. And she breaks into the house and finds all these portraits of movie monsters and scary-looking people and meets this boy named Alexander, who is the son of the owners. And he asks her out, and they start going on dates. She, like, thinks he's a vampire and is waiting for him to turn her and wants to, but he doesn't seem inclined to, and they end up going to this snowball, where, and Trevor uses this entire thing as a way to get revenge on Raven, basically driving a wedge between her and Alexander, and Alexander's like, I can't believe you're like everyone else, I can't believe you're saying these things about my family and us being vampires, I can't believe you don't, you're treating me this way, we're done, and leaves. And Raven's heartbroken, it's like, I love him, I want him back, which is, I honestly can't say for certain whether or not Raven truly loves Alexander for who he is, or just because she thinks he's a vampire, and because they have similar taste, because she goes, she cha she changes her tune very quickly. Because it was, oh, I like, I'm interested in him because he's a vampire. Oh, I'm dating him because he's a vampire. Oh, I really like him because he's a vampire. 
oh, I love him. And I'm also glad he's a vampire, too. Oh, no, he's broken up with me. I can, he's the best person I've ever met. And doesn't even... And the vampire thing got dropped. But it's like... you. I, I still think she's... Like, because you're a vampire, still playing in her back of her brain during this. I don't think she knows enough about him at any point to really be like, oh, yeah, I love him because of his personality. It's like, you don't know him yet. Raven's parents and... This boy that Raven used to know, who she helped break into that ha the nerd house years ago, throw a party to welcome in the Sterlings to the neighborhood to try to help them not feel so uh, put about that. And the entire town shows up, and every and everyone's super happy and being nice and friendly, except Trevor, who's trying to be a rude jerk. But everyone turns on Trevor and k k kicks him out of the party. Raven apologizes to Alexander, and they make up, and Raven's very happy. Then she goes back to the house after, like, party's over, everyone goes home. Raven goes back to the house in the night and opens the door, and the house is empty. All the furniture and stuff is gone, and a bat flies past her and out the door, and she's like, Alexander? That's where this book ends. And I'm like, well, that was abrupt. What? I'm like, that was just a really, like, cut-off ending. We don't ever really get any answers. Is he a vampire? It's like, why did they just suddenly leave? I guess that'll be found in the sequel, because there's nine books in this series. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I will say, I liked this book. This book was all right. It had some good stuff in it. I can't say I'm going to be reading the rest of the series. At least not anytime soon. Because the series has one major flaw against it. And that is that it is very simply written. This is written for not even high schoolers. This is written for like middle schoolers. Or late elementary students. It's very simplistic in its writing style. It's very childish. and But it is also written from the viewpoint of 16-year-old, so it kind of works. But she also kind of talks like she's 10. Hard to pin down what age group this is meant for. But it's definitely not my age type of thing. But I, you know, I really liked it. Raven's a really good character. The, she said They set the family up well. They set the world up fairly well. Uh, I can't say whether or not I like Alexander because I know nothing about him other than he's a shut-in who may or may not be a vampire. I did like the fact that they didn't answer that. Like, they gave you a lot of explanations of wh why these certain things were happening that people were thinking was them being vampires. It's like, well, why did they go to the... Why was he always at the graveyard? It's like, he was visiting his grandmother, who was the woman who died in the house. Oh, okay. Why was he on? Why wasn't he in school? Because he's homeschooled. Okay. Why is there containers full of dirt in the basement of the house? Wait. Do we not get an answer for that one? Okay, we don't get an answer for that one. Fair enough. <laughs> that it's like they answer a bunch of stuff, but there's certain stuff that isn't. And I only reason I would want to read more is to find out if they ever did flat out say whether or not he's a vampire. But I have a feeling. They're not going to tell us that. <laughs> They're just going to keep it vague until the very end of the series. I don't know. It, it's it's fine. It's pretty. It's interesting. Um, there was a book that I did a review on a little while ago called um, Something a Little Different. And a lot of people kept reviewing it and using the word cute. But lacking any real depth. This one is cute, but with some depth. It's a simple read. I read a hundred, like, it's only a little over 200 pages. I read 180 pages in the first, in a day, within, like, an hour. It was not a lot. It was a super easy read. And there is a little character depth. There's a little bit going on, but it's not complex. It's, it's a good, it's a really good book for young readers who are a little bit outside the normal. Or who are at least interested in things that aren't the same as everyone else.
So I can totally understand why my friend likes this series, because she's basically Raven. And I can understand why, if I read this a few years ago, I might have really loved this series, because I'm also basically Raven. Uh, yeah, no, I can totally see someone loving the series. And I really liked it. I thought it was alright. You know, I mean, I, th I have some stuff about it I liked. I enjoyed it. Honestly, I'll just say I enjoyed it. It's a decent, it's a good read. It's a fun, quick read. If I would recommend that if you're interested in something a little lighthearted that you can get through nice and quickly. Um, but yeah, so for now, I have no problem plans to read any more of this series. Maybe at a later date. Happy reading, y'all.